What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and in this video I'm answering the question, what is IRE or percentage when it comes to exposing your video footage? I'm gonna break this down in layman's terms because I believe that whilst it's good to have a base knowledge of how IRE works, I really don't think it's necessary to get into the super technical side of things. It's not helpful, it's not necessary and these days, I don't think it's particularly relevant. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful at all, if it saves you time, if it helps you get the shot or speeds up your workflow in some kind of way, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that with any funds from Patreon I throw back into the channel and buy gear and then review it and then I give it away to you guys once I'm done. These videos take a lot of time to put together so this is just a really elegant way of supporting the channel plus you get the opportunity to win some awesome gear. Right, plug over, let's do it. So what is IRE? It's amazing how often I get this question and it usually comes from a place of just not knowing that your luma values aka your exposure can be represented with a percentage. In a lot of my videos where I'm explaining exposure I talk about percentages and then I get a lot of questions about that and that's on me because I shouldn't assume that this stuff is well known. So let's start off with what IRE stands for and it's an abbreviation and stands for Institute of Radio Engineers and these guys were responsible for setting up the technical side of television back in the day. And honestly, it's not an abbreviation you really need to remember because these days it's perfectly acceptable to use percentage in its place. They're interchangeable. Technically speaking, IRE isn't exactly the same as percentage, but practically speaking, they are the same. There are some IRE sticklers out there, guys that know that IRE and percentage are the same thing, but they enjoy an abbreviation and they like that it kind of confuses, you know, the guy who's just kind of getting his feet wet in video and just learning. Please don't be that guy. Let's not get bogged down. They are the same thing. But I didn't answer what IRE is. Well, essentially, it's a method of communicating brightness and usually on a scale of 0 to 100, hence why percentage is used. 0 being completely dark and 100 being at the point of getting clipped overly bright highlights. It's worth noting that IRE refers to luma values aka brightness and tells us nothing about the colour in your footage. Now let me show you a few examples of IRE in some video clips. So first I thought let's just take a look at this angle of me and my workspace. I've just taken a freeze frame and let's take a look at it now on the waveforms. Of course if you're someone who uses waveforms regularly this is not going to be anything new to you but when we look at it this is actually representing everything going on in our scene from 0% all the way up to 100. It can kind of look like a little bit of a jumble when you first look at it but then we can start to pick bits of it out. For example you can see this is where my skin tones lie somewhere between 45 and 65 percent and of course that accounts for the key side and fill side of my face and then I want to look at the brighter areas of this scene which of course are this neon light and the Edison bulb on the other side and you can see the neon bulb here starting at 75 percent and then the Edison bulb topping out at around 82 and you may be thinking that's actually not that bright considering and there are a few reasons for that. Firstly, I shot this in S-Log3 and that does a particularly good job of retaining detail in the highlights. Secondly, I used the lighting in the scene to bring down the exposure of those bright areas behind me. And thirdly, I really leaned into not having them too bright in my grading process. I used a lookup table that's really good for rolling off highlight areas and that's the Phantom Lutz Utopia lookup table. And by the way, they are linked below. You get a discount when you use the code HARV at checkout. You are welcome. And lastly, I used a vignette effect during the editing process and you can see that in the way that they kind of taper off towards the edges. And then we get to the dark shadow areas of our scene and this bit here is clearly my computer monitor and then here in the bottom right hand corner you can see that is coming from the monitor you can see on my cabinet. Okay I've got more examples coming up in a bit now on with the video. Next we have another tool where it's definitely beneficial to have an understanding of IRE and that's false color and you can see I've got it applied here using the port keys LH5P monitor and this is actually the ARRI model of false color and you can see that the monitor is 
is overlaying a few specific colors at different luma values. And when I bring up the guide, you can see how these different colors are mapped. This pink one shows between 56 and 52%, which is one stop over middle gray, and it's used for exposing Caucasian skin. The green one is 18% gray, and that's mapped between 42 and 38%. The blue and magenta is to indicate black clipping, and then the yellow and red is to indicate white clipping. So in theory, false color is an incredibly useful tool where we can prevent highlights being clipped, we can expose skin tones, we can just expose to middle gray if we want to. It's really cool and I feel like this may be deserving of a separate video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. At this point, I'm sure some of you are thinking, hang on, some of the gammas out there shoot higher than 100%. And yep, yeah, absolutely right. For example, uh, Sony's s Cinetone shoots up to 109% amongst others. So WTF is going on there? This is one time when I feel more comfortable using IRE, because the nerd in me hates it when, say you're watching TV and you hear someone go, I'm going to give it 110% or I'm going to give it 1000% just picking arbitrary numbers over 100 to communicate how much effort they're gonna give it. Guys, learn some maths. Well, this is not the same, and fortunately you can capture brightness levels over 100 IRE. It just gives you just a touch more latitude above 100% just for those highlight areas. Anyway, with all of this in mind, how is this useful? How can you apply it to your workflow? Let me show you some examples. So most cameras have the ability to show zebras as an exposure tool, and it can be incredibly helpful and reliable method of exposing your footage. Take this shot, for example. I exposed the brighter side of my face at around 60%, and I've used the zebra function to let me know when I've hit that point. You could also use zebras to protect your highlights from being clipped by setting them to 100% or whatever your gamma's output is. And we can also use waveforms to judge different elements of your exposure. In this shot, you can see I've made sure the skin tones are somewhere between 45 and 65%, depending on the skin tone. The highlight areas aren't blown and the shadows are looking good and not noisy whatsoever. If you wanna learn more about this kind of thing, I recently did videos about how unreliable the the exposure meter is on the back of Sony cameras and I did a guide for zebras in all of the different filming modes and of course they're linked below. Anyway now it's time to take everything we've learned in this video, grind it up and make a delicious espresso of tips to take away with you. IRE stands for Institute of Radio Engineers but don't worry about remembering that. Day to day it's not that helpful to know. IRE is the same as percentage. You can refer to points of luminance using either they're both correct. In terms of what they are, IRE and percentage are a way of communicating brightness levels of your footage. It's useful knowledge for exposing skin tones, not blowing out highlights, keeping shadows clean and that kind of thing. To apply this knowledge to your workflow, you can use things like zebras, waveforms and false colour. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. If you have any pearls of wisdom regarding zebras or IRE or how to expose things, definitely share them in the comment section below. After all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has picked this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Leave it to you to give me another choice While the buildings crumble Humble am I by the way you And when I find you sinking out of sight